Hi friends, in this video let us see wind turbine aerodynamics that means we need to see the power extraction from the wind actually in the previous class we have studied the power estimation and this is the power extraction let us see how the power is extracted from the wind maybe the turbines and the tubes so all these things will be discussed here let us see yeah wind turbine is used to harness mechanical power from the wind yes we need to get the mechanical power from the wind so that that mechanical power is transferred to a turbine so that the turbine will move and once the turbine is moved there is an alternator connected to the turbine with the same shaft such that the alternator will get the mechanical energy obviously it will give you give us the electrical energy so according to the principle of electromagnetic induction so that's the concept here so this is the main thing so from wind turbine is used wind turbine is the equipment which is used to get the mechanical power from the wind the rotor of the turbine collects energy from the whole area swept by the rotor obviously it can collect the energy whatever the area the rotor is having so it, it is simply collecting from that area only the air mass rate must be the same everywhere within the stream tube actually there is a tube called stream tube and through this tube only wind enters and wind leaves so in between these two we need to collect the wind energy by the turbine that's the concept so the main idea is we the air mass flow rate should be the same and the speed must decrease as air expands this everybody knows the speed decreases as air expands let us see what exactly the idea of these points the stream tube model is known as wet's model of expanding air tube air stream tube and that will be shown here so this is the main concept stream tube model actually in unperturbed wind stream tube in absence of turbine that will be like that where u not is the speed speed entering this is called speed upstream upstream wind speed and this is called downstream wind speed and this is the area of cross sectional cross section a not so if there is no perturbations and there is no turbine then the tube will be like this this is having same and that means from here to here the area of cross section is the same so obviously the speed wind speed is also the same but coming to the wind stream wind stream tube in presence of turbine if turbine is there how it will be if turbine is there the height of this see if you can observe this z not equal to z2 here if there is a turbine at this part the area of cross section is a not and the speed is u not as the the tube has been expanded a not has been changed to a1 that means the area of cross section increases to a1 so obviously the speed wind speed reduces to u1 and similarly after this it was again increased area of cross section again increased so the speed again reduces and this is called downstream wind speed and this is the upstream wind speed this is what exactly happens in the practical wind wind stream tube so wind enters from upstream with u not speed and once it has been entered and it is re it has reached the turbine area with u1 speed and after that it is it has been sent out through downstream area with the speed u2 so this is the clear explanation of these things so based on these things only let us solve some of the let us derive some of the formula the stream tube area of constant air mass is a not upstream which expands to a1 while passing through rotor and becomes a2 downstream this was we have just now discussed regarding this and similarly for the speed the wind speed is u not at upstream and which reduces to u1 while passing through the rotor and becomes u2 at downstream okay this was also explained the air mass flow remains the same throughout this stream tube so this is the very important point here and based on this point we are going ahead now so this is the mass here rho 
K naught U naught this is at the upstream and row A1 U1 this is at the turbine place and row A2 U2 and this is at the downstream. So wherever you can see the mass should be the same. So once this has been done let us move on to some other derivations. If U0 and U2 are the wind speeds of upstream and downstream respectively. So what happened? The force or the thrust. Here we can uh, derive the force or the thrust on the rotor which is equal to the reduction in momentum per unit time from the air mass flow rate. That means we need to consider the reduction of momentum and that reduction itself gives us the force. So force can be equal to Reduction in momentum means the actually the speed changes from u0 to u2. So we need to calculate the momentum at upstream and we need to calculate the momentum at the downstream and the difference of these two will give us the force. Okay, that's the simple formula capital F equal to m u0 minus m u2. Very simple. So the force applied by the air at uniform air flow speed of u1, okay, it's subscript passing through actuator disc that means actuator disc of the turbine so the power extracted by the turbine is so how can we find the power extracted by the turbine that will be very easy so the force into velocity so pt is equal to capital f into u1 force into speed wind speed which is equal to f is already derived in the upper equation so we can get the formula for for F force and we have substituted here so finally it will be M into U0 minus U2 into U1 okay simple concept next the power extracted from the wind is also equal to the loss in kinetic energy per unit time thus PT is sorry this is PW this is power extracted from the wind so this is PW so PW is equal to half into M into u0 square minus u2 square this is the thing so uh, let me change it actually this is the error here this is not pt this is pw yeah yes this is pw so the idea is pt is the pt is the power extracted by the turbine and P, pw is the power extracted from the wind of course these two are the same so i can equate both of them i can equate these things so definitely i will get some other relation from equating these two powers pt and pw i will get u1 is equal to u0 plus u2 whole divided by 2 that means the speed of the wind turbine is the exactly the average of speeds of upstream and the downstream. So the here I need to discuss regarding interference factor to make our equations or the, to make our formula fulfilled. Here A is the interference factor and it is defined as fractional wind speed decrease at the turbine. That means the fractional wind speed decreased at the turbine. That means here I need to see the decrease in the speed. So how it at turbine up to turbine only. That means the speed at the upstream is u0 and the speed at the turbine is u1. So the decrement in speed will be u0 minus u1 and that should be with respect to u0. So u0 minus u1 divided by u0 will give us the A. Yeah, very simple concept. So A equal to U0 minus U1 divided by U1. And this can also be written as U1 is equal to 1 minus A into U1. That means uh, I 1 minus A into this is also small mistakes here. This is 1 minus A into U0. Okay, not U1. This is U0. Yeah, this is u1 is equal to 1 minus a into u0. Next, a is equal to u0 minus u2 whole divided by 2 u0. That means this is the expression of a in terms of u0 and u2. Okay, we have incorporated u2 also. 
as yes, we know that u1 is equal to u0 plus u2 whole divided by 2 so this expression is in terms of u2 also so once these expressions have been derived now we can use the same thing in our derivation parts so a is also called as induction or perturbation factor power extracted by the turbine may be written as now it will it can be written as pt is equal to 4a into 1 minus a whole square into of rho a1 u0 u this is the final expression by incorporating all these things in that equation pt is equal to f into u1 in that equation if we incorporate all the things so you will finally get this pt is equal to 4a into 1 minus a whole square into of rho a1 u0 u okay this is the final expression this can be written as cp into p0 what we have derived in the previous lecture and uh, that is p0 p0 is the power estimated by the wind turbine so that will be of rho a1 u0 cube okay that will be the power at the turbine so that can be written as p0 so now now my job is here the unknown is cp only we know everything except cp let us discuss a few points regarding cp what is the cp cp is the fraction of available power in the wind that can be extracted and is known as power quotient and is given by obviously 4a into 1 minus a square so cp is the power quotient so this is a fraction of the power available for the extraction so p0 is the estimated power and the this is the fraction of power power quotient if you multiply these two we will get the power extracted okay that's the concept so the variation of cp is shown in the figure okay once figure is shown we, we will discuss over that yeah these points are regarding the figure we need to draw the graph here so let us discuss some of the points here so the first point is when there is no load what will happen if there is no load coupled to the turbine u1 is equal to u0 as load is there we need to increase the cross-sectional area of the tube and the finally the speed will be reduced but here there is no load so no need to increase the cross-sectional area so finally the speed will be equal to upstream so the upstream speed so definitely u1 is the turbine speed which is equal to the upstream speed so if these two are the these two are equal what happened to a so a equal to zero so the turbine doesn't generate any power so obviously cp equal to zero so this is one analogy let us keep all these points in mind and let's let's graph let's draw a graph in between cp and a okay that will give us the complete figure and we will discuss all these points there also suppose now the load is applied what happens now the load is applied this is so small mistakes here yeah now the load is applied now the load is applied power extracted cp increases as u1 decreases obviously if the load is applied u1 will be decreased and cp will be increased so what is the maximum value of cp maximum value of the cp can be occurred at a equal to 1 by 3 and that will be 16 by 27 and the that will come around 0.593 so obviously at this condition u0 u1 is equal to 2 by 3 u0 and u2 equal to 1 by 3 u0 so these are the things so the what is the cp now cp is maximum cp is 16 by 27 which is equal to 0.593 so what exactly it means so this is the called bits criterion so this is called bits criterion that means where the power quotient is the maximum and that value will be 0.593 that is called bits criterion okay this is very important point yeah this is the graph what we have studied till now and uh, let me explain you few more points to fulfill this graph let's finish on them so when u2 equal to 0 what i what happened to a a, a equal to 0.5 so the simple model breaks down as no wind is predicted to be leaving downstream so you are not allowing any wind to go through the downstream so all wind is 
stagnated at the turbine only so obviously it will be broke down so that's why u2 if u2 equal to 0 the value of a will be 0.5 uh, when wind speed at turbine is reduced to 0 u1 equal to 0 if wind speed at the turbine is reduced to 0 okay so at the turbine the speed is 0 what happened a equal to 1 then no power expected same thing happens so based on all these values so for the first value is at no load in second value is if load is applied and third value is at u2 equal to 0 and fourth value is at u1 equal to 0 we can plot diagram like this so here you can see the value of a here value of a here is 0 that means u1 equal to u0 and u2 is equal to u0 so no power is generated so at this point this is the cp value is 0 and the a value is also 0 so the diagram is like this so whatever wind is coming that that much wind is going in this right way so without reducing the width of the tube that means u0 equal to u1 equal to u2 okay that's the concept but to get the maximum value it can be done at a equal to 1 by 3 that means 0 0.333 value so u1 equal to 2 by 3 by u0 and u2 equal to 1 by 3 by u0 so the diagram will be like this the tube will be expanded in this way so this is the maximum power we can obtain and the maximum that value of maximum power will be 0 0.593 and that is the value of cp okay what we have discussed that is the value of cp so yet point next point is at a equal to 0 0.5 what exactly happens at a at a equal to 0 0.5 actually this is a this was the mistake i have collected it from one of the textbooks bhcon so this is 0 0.2, 0 0.4, this one is 0 0.6, not 0 0.5. So in between 0 0.4 and 0 0.5, 0 0.6, sorry, in between 0 0.4 and 0 0.6, there should be 0 0.5 here. So that's why A equal to 0 0.5 here, 1 by 2. At this spot, U1 will be half of U0 and U2 will be 0. So this is the turbulence operation will come up. And so this is the one more point where u2 equal to 0 similarly we have discussed where u1 equal to 0 in this also this is called stall thing and a, a equal to 1 here so once a equal to 1 here this will be reduced so everything will be gone and the cp is also equal to 0 here so this is the graph what we can plot based on these things so let's move on so this was these things were explained so this is the graph between cp the power portion and a this state is also known as tail state of the blades okay yet yet no power if no power has been extracted and u1 equal to 0 a equal to 1 so this is called stall state of the blades yeah let's discuss bits criteria in something deeper so in practice what exactly happens is all the kinetic energy of the wind cannot be converted to shaft power because some energy is lost and since the air must be able to flow away from the rotor area so definitely there is a loss in the wind power so the shaft power should be the best criterion is derived by using a law of conservation of momentum and law of conservation of energy these are the main rules that the best criterion can be derived so what exactly happens in bits criteria so it suggests the turbine efficiency of e 15 percent but in practice it's 20 to 30 percent only turbine efficiency or we can call it as even power coefficient also yeah this is the derivation for the bits continuation of which criterion only axial thrust on turbine fa so is also very easy derivation so we can go ahead with no energy extraction Bowerly's equation for upstream and downstream may be written as actually these are from uh, fluid mechanics so we can see it p naught by rho plus g into z naught plus u naught square by 2 plus p2 by rho 
plus g z2 plus u2 square by 2 okay this is the bernoulli's equation so of course he has equated some uh, quantity of it downstream and up it upstream so if the, if we see the static pressure in it pressure difference so here the p0 and p2 are the pressure set downstream and the upstream so sorry upstream and the downstream respectively and let us see the change in pressure will be delta p equal to p0 minus p2 which is equal to u0 square minus u2 square into rho by 2 okay these are the formula let us see the maximum pressure difference occurs when u2 equal to 0 okay that we know very well that will be when u2 equal to 0 it will be u0 square rho by 2 similarly the force fa max will be a1 rho u0 square rho by 2 okay this is the these are the things once we get the pressure point of view okay we get the pressure point of view we, we have seen the pressure difference and if we get the maximum pressure u2 should be zero we have made it to zero and finally we will get the chain maximum pressure and after that we also obtain the maximum force so the axial thrust must be equal to the loss of momentum of the air stream so what is this f a is equal to m u naught minus m u2 this was already we have seen this part so let us see the other things so using all the equations discussed so far we can finally we can finalize this part f a equal to 4 a into 1 minus a into 1 by 2 rho a1 u naught square okay this is the formula we can obtain by seeing all the formulae where we can apply m dot and u naught a all these things so that you can finalize this part and that will be exactly equal to cf into capital f a max where cf is the quotient cf equal to 4 a into 1 minus a and this is the maximum thrust occurs when cf equal to 1 so that is that we can easily visualize that when cf equal to 1 so you see f a will become f a max but which is achieved at a equal to 1 by 2 so where we can achieve this part means a, a equal to 1 by 2 we can get this maximum power can be extracted by bits criterion occurs when a equal to 1 by 3 and what happened to cf the cf value will be 8 by 9 so this is the relation between uh, cf and a when it is in, when maximum power is extracted according to the bits criterion so torque developed by the turbine so what is the torque developed by the turbine here so the maximum consumable torque tm if we consider tm on an ideal turbine rotor would occur if maximum circumferential force acts at the tip of the blade with the rotor radius r okay this is the famous formula where we can get the maximum torque if we multiply the maximum circumferential force into radius of the rotor so the circumferential force can be written as p0 by u0 into r so the tip speed ratio here we need to find the tip speed ratio so what is meant by tip speed ratio the tip speed ratio is the lambda so which is equal to speed of the tip of the rotor blade divided by speed of the oncoming air so tip of the rotor bed means we need to consider the angular velocity and we need to consider the radius of the rotor so if we multiply both of them we will get the speed of speed at the tip of the blade and finally the ongoing ongoing oncoming air it's not ongoing it's oncoming air and that will be u naught okay we can call it as upstream speed upstream speed so this is the main concept of tip speed ratio and we will see this part so we have simply substituted in tm so tm equal to p0 by u0 into r so in place of r by u0 we have substituted lambda by omega so finally tm equal to p0 lambda by omega so we have incorporated the tip speed ratio in maximum torque but in practice the torque of the shaft torque is always less than the maximum torque and that will be ct into tm as we have seen we have seen cp power quotient and we have seen 
uh, we have seen CF, maybe you can call it as force coefficient also. And this is CT, this is the torque coefficient. This is known as torque coefficient, but as we know, TSH omega equal to P. Okay, it's the famous equation, power equal to torque into omega. So, PSH omega equal to PT. So, let us see what happened. Yeah, we have substituted TSH equal to TM, sorry, CT into TM. So, CT TM omega is equal to PT equal to CPP naught that we know. So, again, we have, let us substitute TM also. So, this will be CT P naught lambda equal to CP P naught. So, P naught P naught will get cancelled and finally, CT will become CP divided by lambda. Simple concept. So, both CT and CP are the functions of tip speed ratio, but as per Betts criteria, the value of CP is 0.593 only. So, therefore, the maximum CT max is equal to CP max by lambda. Okay, this is the final expression, the, what we can get the relation between the torque coefficient and the power coefficient. Yeah, let us see the dynamic matching for maximum power extraction. What does it mean? That means we have till now we have seen as for bits criteria, a turbine can theoretically extract maximum value of 59% of the available power in the wind. Okay, we have seen two to three times the same fact. So what exactly happens means, however, but this criteria doesn't tell about anything about the dynamic rotational state of the turbine required to reach this maximum power condition. So what exactly happens in dynamic behavior of the turbine to reaching this maximum power condition. Let us see that will be discussed here. Tip speed ratio again once again we need to consider tip speed ratio here. At the constant wind speed power extracted by the turbine will be reduced if the blades are so close together or rotating so rapidly that a blade moves into the turbulence of the other blade created by the preceding blade so that is the case with this power extracted will be the will be reduced and the second one is so far if the blades are so far apart or rotating so slowly that much that much of that much of air passes through the cross sectional area of the device so without interacting with the blades okay that's the thing that means if the wind speed is constant the power extracted by the turbine may be reduced if the blades the blades are so close together or the blades are so far apart okay only two things so what happened if these things are there thus a particular wind speed there exists an optimum turbine speed to produce maximum output definitely the turbine should not move so fast and should not move so slow so there should be some optimum speed so what is that therefore to obtain optimum efficiency it's important to match the rotational frequency of the turbine with the corresponding wind speed okay, those two things should be matched so what does it mean let okay let's see these things by taking a derivation part of it Let's TB is the time taken by the blade to reach the previous position. To reach the previous position occupied by the preceding blade. Okay, so that that's the time. TB is the time taken by the time taken by any blade to occupy the previous position of the preceding blade. Okay, that's the simple concept. And one more time, TW is there. This is the time for the disturbed wind moving past that position and normal air becoming re-established. That means if any unwanted air or any turbulence, maybe any perturbation comes, so it's a time taken to regain its old speed. Okay, that's the concept here. So these are the two times defined here. Let us see what happened with these times. For unbladed turbine rotating with angular velocity of omega, what happened? Tb equal to 2 pi by n omega. A disturbance at the turbine is created by the blade into which the following blade moves will last for a time. So what is the time Tw? 
that time Tw equal to d by rho naught. So what happened now? Where d is the length of the wind strongly perturbed by the rotating plates. Now to get the maximum power that will be occurred at Tw is approximately equal to Tb. So if we substitute those things, we will get those parts. Yes, d by omega d by u naught is approximately equal to 2 pi by n omega. So let us see if we multiply r on both sides, that will be like that r omega by u naught is approximately equal to 2 pi r by n d. So what is r omega by u naught? That's we have already defined and that's the tip speed ratio. Yeah. So lambda naught is equal to is approximately equal to 2 pi by n into r by d but in practice d can be r by 2 and finally lambda naught is approximately equal to 4 pi by n if this is the case for two bladed turbine the maximum power extracted occurs at lambda equal to 4 pi by where n equal to 2 so 4 pi by 2 will give us 2 pi so lambda naught equal is approximately equal to 2 pi and if, you, if it is a four bladed turbine the value should be equal to pi okay that is the thing so if we see if we keenly observe the relationship between cp and lambda and that can be with these things with the diagram it can be shown and the maximum practically obtainable cp will be 0 0.5 of course the value maximum value may be 0.593 but still we can get up to 0.5 if you get 0.4 and more also the plotter will be the turbine will be very good okay that will be considered as a good good turbine so let us see the diagram yeah the, these are the this is the diagram of cp versus lambda for various turbines here you can see so many rotors are there so one of the bigger line will be the ideal propeller type rotor and this is very good rotor so it will reach cp of 59 percent also and the second rotor may be this one commercial two bladed rotor and the value the maximum value may be around more than 0.4 and less than 0.5 between 0.4 and 0.5 similarly the third one is commercial three bladed rotor this is somewhat lesser and maybe approximately equal to 0.4 of CP. And this next one is Darius type rotor, vertical axis rotor, and this is somewhat lesser compared to the previous one. And the, its CP value is in between 0.3 to 0.4, and American multi multi blade rotor pump, and this value is somewhat less than 0.3. And the this value Dutch four blade windmill value is around 0.2 and the saviors rotor vertical axis value is in between 0.1 to 0.2 so these are the different types of rotors available and the graphs are cp versus lambda so let us see there is a relation between tsr tip speed ratio and the number of blades and what is that relation the tsr is also related to number of blades in a rotor okay the TSR increases as the number of blades decreases as the table. Okay, let us see the table. See, yeah, this is the thing. If you, if TSR is one, the number of blades are six to twenty. If number of blades are four to twelve, that means number of blades were reduced, but the TSR will increase. If it is three to eight, TSR is three. If it is three to five, TSR is four. If it is two to four, TSR is five to eight. So if it is one to two. TSR is 8 to 15 so it's inversely related the relation between TSR and number of blades okay this is the thing and the finally we can see the blade setting angle gamma or uh, this can also be called as pitch angle so this is the main part main controlling part to effectively control the output power speed and torque of the wind turbine okay, this is very important concept if we like to control the wind turbine yeah these are the things for various blade blade pitch angle and for zero degree the the value is cp value is almost reaching 0 
and at 5 degree the value is around just above the 0.2 and if it is 10 degree this is around 1.12 also so these are the things of blade setting pitch angle so this is the explanation for extraction of wind energy so these are the these come under the aerodynamics wind aerodynamics and if you like this video please like it if you want to share this video please share you with your friends and family and kindly subscribe to my youtube channel so that you will get the notifications and if you press the bell button you will get the notifications whenever i upload any video thank you thank you very much